While he blessed them, he was carried up to heaven. The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Chapter 24, verses 46 to 53. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in the name of all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witness to these things. And behold, I said the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with the power from on high. Then he led them as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up to heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. The Gospel of our Lord. Today, as we said in our opening antiphon and the remarks, is that um, we celebrate the ascension, the solemnity. It is the seventh Sunday. And this is a very important solemnity because it marks the return of Jesus to the Father. We did say that this too, we can call it a solemnity of hope. Together with resurrection, it is a manifestation of the victory of Christ. Therefore, in that respect, it is also a solemnity that celebrates victory. This solemnity teaches us, amongst other things, that the church is essential, very essential. I am saying this because we still have some fellows in this world who feel that uh, they would be on their own without the church. And in this case, I'm talking about the institutional church. It is very essential. This solemnity also teaches us that it is good to pray before taking an action. Every time we are about to make a decision or do an action, it is important that we pray. The most important part of that prayer is that that prayer must be patient. 
that tells you that patience is another lesson that solemnity of the ascension teaches us. And that the best prayer, you know, that we can utter at any one point, it is come Holy Spirit. That is a complete prayer and a very powerful prayer. Very. For those of you who are encountered spiritually, you know exactly what I mean. Something else that comes out very clear is that uh, God gives us what we need, not what we want. No wonder we talk about aligning, aligning our intention with the will of God. It is what he wills for our lives. It is what we ask of him. Many a times when we pray and our prayer is not answered to, on the affirmative, you know, we think that uh, God has forgotten us, maybe he's becoming deaf, or other things. But the point is, had I aligned my intention with the will of God? The other thing we are taught today is that obey. Even if you don't understand, it is good to obey. And finally, that when it comes to prayer, never give up. When it comes to prayer, and I think we did intimate this last Sunday, and I think it is one of the, the concluding uh, statements that we made on Sunday, that um, there comes a time when we feel that maybe our problems have really bugged us and we think that we own the timelines. Forgetting that we exist in historical time, God exists in Kairos. Our time can be calibrated and we would comfortably and scientifically say uh, between this time and this time, this time and this time, the time of God tells us that we do not own the timelines. And because we do not own the timelines, then we do not have the honors of giving up. Our work is to keep on asking. Our work is to keep on knocking until the door is opened. The door at the Bible in Matthew 7, 7 does not tell us after how long the door will be opened. Ask, it will be given. Knock, and the door will be opened. The Bible does not tell us, knock for three months, after which then you can lodge a complaint. No. The ascension is a solemnity that sustains the hope of Christians that one day, one day, we shall be where Christ is. One day, we shall be happy with him. One day, we shall see him as he is. And one day, our longing will be settled. That is the ascension. The Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches that Numbers 665 to 667 teaches, and I read, Jesus Christ, the head of the church, precedes us into his Father's glorious kingdom so that we, the members of his body, may live in the hope of one day being with him forever. Numbers 665 to 667. Our pilgrimage is a journey of spiritual maturity to prepare us for an eternity with God. We belong to the church pilgrimage. And today now, we deepen our catechism and we are reminded that we are not into this pilgrimage just for fun. 
There is a reason why we are in this pilgrimage. To spiritually mature. There is a reason why some students will take 10 years in elementary education before they go to secondary education. There is a reason why students will take four years in secondary education before they graduate to the university. There is a reason why students will go through the university education three years, four years, five years, six years before they graduate to the next level of life. Our pilgrimage is a journey of spiritual patience to prepare us for an eternity with God. Our pilgrimage is a journey with many hurdles. Again, to prepare us for the eternity with God. Our pilgrimage is a journey of hope. A journey of hope. Preparing us for an eternity with God. Our pilgrimage is a journey of trust. Still to prepare us for an eternity with God. Our pilgrimage is a process leading us to a graduation. If you like, divine graduation. If you like, in some more proper theology, beatific vision. Please underline the word process because it is important. The word process is important in the Ascension Sunday because it comes to attack our style of living which is anti-process. We are living in times where we want everything instant. You will have noted in many cities in the world that um, you go to our big malls and now there is a very um, there is a, I don't want to call it a current phenomena but it is, it is maybe in some countries that now you don't have to cook at home. You can go to the mall and you can buy some ready food. And we seem to like the concept. We don't have to go home and cook. You can just buy some food. Then we go home. The microwave. Put there. One minute. It is hot. I eat. Go to the shower. Instant heater. The water comes. Instant washing. I take the towel. Instant wiping. <laughs> I go to bed. Instant sleep, I know. That does not work that way. <laughs> but that tells us something. And this is where mainly the lesson of today lies. The word process. At a times in life, we are too much in hurry to begin and to make an impact and to impress others. Uh-huh. Too much in a hurry. We think that if I do this and this and this and this and this, and this, this uh, translates. I, I, I flick this switch, I flick this, I flick this, then this happens. Mm -hmm. And then everybody is impressed. A good example that may not be liked by many uh, people in this world, especially for our young girls, they want to hook up with someone as quickly as possible without being prepared to mature for a friendship. Friendship matures. But we are in too much hurry because I want to belong. Having been in corridors of higher education for many, many years, I, am, I can share with you this piece of wisdom. Our young, beautiful girls in our colleges and universities, and actually, saddest, even some high schools, maybe all, 
a girl feels okay if she is in a relationship and not with Jesus. Such that it is almost a scandal for a girl in the university and she has nobody, even Jesus. And how now do hey? <laughs> but you see now, I want to share with you something here. Everything in life for it to make an impression, it must be given the benefit of time for maturity. Precisely this is the message we are getting from the ascension. Now, dear girls, remember one thing. Whatever God created, and whoever was created by God is a good man, is a good woman. So, dear girls, every man is good. But not every man... Uh, yeah! See, they, now they are jumping to... Because they know they are, what, uh, what I'm about to say is a bit bad. <laughs> Every man is good, but not every man is right to be your spouse. That is very, very good for you to know. Knowing someone for a long time does not qualify that person to be your spouse. Haven't I had these funny stories? You know, we have known each other from, from primary school, high school. We have known each other for 10 years. Now we got married and think, now the things are not working. Yes, because yours was supposed to be friendship. But because you refused to allow the friendship to be. Listen to this, dear girls. The greatest injustice you can do to yourself is to graduate a wrong relationship into marriage or to an intimate relationship. It is the greatest sin you can commit to yourself. Being in friendship with somebody does not give you the right to graduate that. Remember, some friendships are meant to be like that. Just friendship. Please, Never graduate what was never meant to be graduated. Every graduation must meet some criteria of or requirement. Listen to this. I'm imagining somebody is, is graduating with a master's degree. This is what a certain university will write. This is this certificate is awarded to Joshua the cameraman, for example. Eh? Joshua, <laughs> who has satisfactorily, please listen to these wordings of, from the university, because that's where you are. Who has satisfactorily pursued the studies, one, passed the examinations, two, and they complied with all other requirements. Therefore, mm -hmm. <laughs> master degree of department of in this college and the center is appended. This means for this fellow to get this degree, three requirements must be met. The studies must be pursued. For the Garivantas in this world. Your work is to go around the world and then you want to graduate. Maybe in your own world. Number two, all the examinations must be passed, even those that were five marks. Pass them. And then there are other uh, there are other things that you need to comply with. Now, some of you graduated a relationship that had only pursued studies. Immediately, kofia, be my wife. And from nowhere, you have met three weeks. Uh, everybody, now you have even, even changed the name from Jemo, from Joshua to Bay. Bay, where? <laughs> where did the Bay come from? Do you know before somebody becomes a Bay, must graduate, uh, must pursue studies, pass examinations, and comply with all other requirements of Bayism? Allah. You don't just collect anybody and call a bee. You might end up one day calling a goat bee. 
no please no please no no listen to this again and i have said this eh, that it is good for you to understand that some 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 relationships were never meant for any graduation at all the moment you graduate them you hurt your heart you injure your heart let me tell you the reason why we have so many people with broken hearts it is not because hearts are fragile it is because the owners of these these hearts are so poor in making decision so poor and they are so unfair to themselves and so unfair to their health now you are telling us from nowhere from nowhere you are telling us that now this is so wrong men are bad men are not bad you got a very good man in fact a very good god knows you graduated the wrong person allah a book club for men <laughs> Today I'm getting so many enemies. <laughs> but, <laughs> you see, if you are nursing right now, whatever you are in the world, listen to Father CK. And I told you that I'm Father CK just in case. Eh? If you are nursing a heartbreak, maybe you need to probe the process. If you are in a marriage that is not working or, or has refused completed work, Please, probe the process. You may have graduated the person that was never meant for graduation. And then you are telling us, we were together in the university for four years or five years. We knew each other. We were doing projects together. We were studying together. You were meant to do only that. Only that. Only that. Nothing else, actually. If you did anything else, you actually uh, qualify to be jailed, having not been heard by anybody. Pick the pharaoh, take to jail. One year, apart a double. And to a beard. Yeah, you see, nowadays, religions are not working. They are working for men and the beautiful girls who carried their brains relationships. When you enter into a relationship, please carry with you your brains. You can't leave your brains in the hostel and you go to the relationship. Who bewitched you? And then you are telling us that men are bad. You go to a relationship minus a brain with a fellow who has brains who is waiting for an opportunity of graduation because he is also, fizzy, fizzy, oh, he is also like a fissy. He, he's, he, he is officiated. You know, men sometimes are opportunists. He may be knowing that this relationship is not going anywhere. But because I'm dealing with somebody who came with an empty head, and then you are saying, you know, uh, you see, I read something the other day that uh, there is nothing as painful in this world as a woman trying to prove her love to the wrong person. And you're saying, no, I'm showing him signs. Who? Men don't see signs. They, so des they see desperation. And you're like, you can't pick here. You can't pick Did you go to the university to find out to go? Shame on you. Asa kumuwashe ya guo, na kumuwashe nyumba, wee ni kibarua ulieda. Osha guo, osha nyumba, Pika ukule, go for your brains, come and negotiate. <laughs> eh, hi. Hi, hi. Siju hey. nitapiti ya wapi. <laughs> Again, let me say this. Some relationships in this world were only meant to be friendships. Never graduate the wrong person to a wrong position because you have prepared yourself for a heartbreak that may not even heal. To our young men, young men, they want to get rich quickly. Kabisa. And they would want to get rich as quickly as they could without learning or knowing the principles of success 
and prosperity. The result most time always is actually failure because you are never adequately prepared or you have not matured enough to take the challenge in life. Quick fix mentality is the greatest disease with our young men today. Quick fix mentality. That is why so many of them has entered into very, very poor uh, deals. Someone tells you that uh, if we do this, uh, we get money, then do the other thing. You go to work on Monday, by Friday you have money. It never works that way. It has never worked that way. Some of you don't want to go through college. You don't want to go through a degree, a, 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 a university course. Because you want a business that gives you money instantly. And you keep on asking us in these corridors funny questions. Hey, Father, which, which, which course has a lot of money? None. There is no course has a lot of money. Courses do not carry money. You get money after you have solved a problem. Properly put, you get money when you have engaged your intellect. I have told you in the past, God gave you a head with the brains. The only thing that you have never maybe known is that it can only be used here. In heaven, your brain is not needed. You will have a glorified body. No mathematics there. So if you cannot use your head here on earth, it is so sad that you are born. Why are we getting so many young men turning into cabbages? Because somebody was told, stop the degree course, stop going to college, come, we do some business. And then you are conned. Others, others they entered into what, is, what, we, are, what we are calling nowadays um, um, money laundering. Others have entered into, into what? Betting. Betting is killing our men in the universities. It is becoming our other addiction after drugs. Why are our university boys doing out of betting? Because of the quick fix mentality. Haven't I met myself? So many men, young men, intellectually gifted, but they have been stolen by this world mentality that there is quick money somewhere. There is no quick money somewhere. Ask even the thieves. Not the living, those who are dead. Call them. They are dead in the graves because somebody taught them and lied to them. You can get money very quickly. What they got quickly was death. Now they are in their cold graves. Cold graves. And some of you, if you do not change, you are running after those quick fix mentalities, getting money very, very quickly. The grave is waiting for you. Transform. Please do. Allow the process to take time. Your parents are going to school at 40, at 50, at 60. They are in the universities. And you are just there running away from the same school to go for marriage, to go for work. You need to have your head examined. You need to. If you can't, be taken by force for a thinking exercise. It is not right because tomorrow you just come to us, you are giving us problems. Why? You dropped in the second year to get married. Hello? Somebody told you that no, no, don't, don't proceed. Just come. We do business. Uh -huh. Dear girls, if you hear a man telling you to stop school so that you can marry him, just know before God and his holy church, you have come face to face with an enemy of progress, a walking tragedy, and the reason for you are a grave. Because you go there, he knows you did go through school. So you severed your relationship with your parents. All the people who loved you, they told you, please don't, please don't, don't do that. Finish. No, you didn't want to hear. 
because somebody told us, a wise man told us that uh, the only heart you cannot trust is the heart of a young woman in love. You never listened. So the man, uh, now you are in the man's house. You are a mother of one and a half. Because you are, one is already born, you are nine, nine, nine weeks pregnant. The second one. And he is all over. He can't listen to you. Because he knows. This man is terrorizing you because he knows two things. One, you do not have a backup plan. You refused to listen to the voice of reason. Number two, he knows that sometimes you don't have a brain that can be engaged for anything meaningful. But you are available for bearing children. Now there you are. I'm going to commit suicide. He is, he is, he is, he is, he is he's treating me very badly. I better commit suicide. Even if you die, you can't become a martyr. You will not be celebrated. We will come and bury you. And we will bury you as a beautiful girl, gifted intellectually, but she made the wrong choice. The wrong choice. We will be sad that you are dead. We will not be sad because of your death. We will be sad because an opportunity that you had, you refused to grab it, thinking that marriage was getting finished. You are rushing to get married at 21, and your mother who is 59 is already tired with her marriage. Your grandmother who is 70 already died without a husband. She had attempted, made the same mistake. Your mother made the same mistake, and there you are, a single mother at 21, telling us of generations. Which generations? I told you there is a difference between generational dysfunction and foolishness. You, you are in the category of a fool. Your mother may have fallen because she was not given the benefit of education. But she decided, my daughter will go through school. I don't want her to get the problem that I got after I got her before I got married. I want my daughter to be somewhere. Now, perfectly at 21, you have read the script of your grandmother, the script of your mother, and you have given birth to a tiny girl whom if not well taken care of by you, because now you are miserable. That is, if you are going to survive, you are not going to commit suicide. Uh, she might repeat what you did. Because you tell her that men are goats. Men are not goats. We have got millions and millions of girls who went through rigorous life experiences and they triumphed. They are strong. They may never have had dads to mentor them, but they made it. Please don't tell us that the reason why you cannot achieve your dream is because you don't have a dad. That is not here nor there. It is not. Please, please don't make your own stupid mistakes and then you blame your mother or your father for being there or not. Was your mother there? When somebody lied to you, drop your degree, you come, you marry me, we work here. Was your mother there? She wasn't there. Your mother was paying school fees, but you could not listen to anybody. You are even asking her, what do you know about love? Your mother does not know anything about love. But your mother knows that a man can disappoint. That's why she's a single mother. Your mother knows that if you make a stupid mistake, it can lead you to trouble and address tears. That's where you are. So don't tell us that, you know, uh, what does she know about love? She does not know. She does not know anything, anything. In fact, she has never known. But she has an eternal lesson. That's why you have no father. That's what she's telling you, my daughter, please work hard. Don't add up the way I added up. Don't. Please, dear girls, again, if any man ever tells you to drop the goal you are pursuing for marriage, please know that you are in the wrong place. Marriage is not an urgency. Not. Don't tell us that if I don't get, marry him now, he'll get somebody else. Let him get somebody else. God is maturing you up for something that will be sustainable. This is the reason why there is a process. 
Please, dear girls, dear young men, today, your dads and your uncles who are in business, some of them are rushing for evening classes for him to get a master's degree. Others to finish their degree. And you are at 23, your work is to bet, taking changa and a buggy and running after hopeless girls. Because you, at that stage, you can only get a hopeless girl like you. Then you get together two hopeless fellows. You give birth to a cruelest child. And then you are bringing to us a very hopeless generation. For those of you who are just asking Swahili, tell me, if you are a, a boy at 23, 23, you are girlfriend, you are a girl, you are a girl, you are a girl, you are a girl, you are a Alafu nasa kusema, hee, atu kujua mtuto wa kija ni accidental, accidental, accidental na mtuto wa guo. Ala! Ah, sorry, good morning. <laughs> Hello everyone. I am Father CK. <laughs> Dear young men and women, there is time for everything. Grab your Bible and read Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. There is time for everything. Kuna wakati wa masomo na wakuoana. Kuna wakati wa kazi na wa betting. Never mix what is not supposed to be mixed. Some things are never uh, miserable. You can't mix, mix them. We say they are immiserable. There are some things you cannot mix. Two that you can't. And take from, my, from me is education and pleasure. These two, they never go together. You cannot concentrate writing a scientific paper and you are out every night for dancing and buggy. It, it has never worked. If you want to try, try at your own risk. But we are going to show you a number of young men who attempted. Now they look like cabbages. Some of these are the men you are seeing at 43, at 45, at 46. They have no wives. They wasted their life using zero things. So everybody now is, is worried. Eh, will he get married? He is getting married at 45 and the guy is clueless. Hana mister yata ya kurusha. Anese ya olewe. Ayata ya musiana. Amuwe usiku kwa giza. Why? Because the guy is dry. Has nothing in the head. Hope gone, no job, no papers. You can never tell anybody that you went to any university if you have no paper to show. You can't be a man who go to the university, start, you can't finish. Even if you got an A, we will call you a man who cannot accomplish anything in life. That's why everything you start in a kufa. Another business in a kufa. Igine in a kufa. Igina in Akufa. Why are they dying? Because in your system, you do not have the discipline of the process. The discipline of the process gives you the outcome of the outcome of trying. When you go through the discipline of the process, you can know I will finish. Dear young man, it will be better you finish. You just get a pass. Please. Okay, I have a problem with you getting a pass if you, had, if you are well uh, gifted, but I better you go, finish, please get a pass. We will know. He finished his Form 4. He got an A or an A minus. Went to the university. He had so many false starts. And then, but thank God, he has finished. Thank, even if you are going to finish after 10 years, those of you who have stopped, Please, young men, go back to school. What will you tell your son or your daughter when they are struggling with education and you do not finish yours? You can't tell them to persevere. You cannot persevere yourself. You can't tell them to follow the process. You can't follow yourself. You know that. You have no discipline. 
You can't tell them to finish their education. You never finished yours. So you, from day one, you have no moral authority. Your daughter will ask you, Daddy, where is your degree? And then, you, by then, you'll be blaming the government. You know that time, there was a government of this president. The president has nothing to do with your completing or not completing. There is time for thank you. If you can, again, read Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8. This same thing of the discipline of the process, it, it happens to our spiritual journey. At the times, we are too much in a hurry to begin a spiritual journey with or very little preparation, sometimes with none. Today's readings reminds us the importance of the process. And for us to be in that state of mind, to follow the process, again, we must be obedient to the will of God. There is nothing as good as a man who can obey. There is nothing as good as a woman who can obey. I always tell our young people, your mom may not be as educated as you are. Your dad may not be as educated as you are. But there is something your dad knows. That a bright future is better for you than your pride today. If your mom tells you, my daughter, I don't like that friendship, please listen. There's something she is seeing. If your dad tells you, my son, I don't like that friendship, there's something that he is seeing. When, he te when, when Jesus tells us, I am going, I am going to prepare somewhere, something for you, I'll come for you. Ours is to patiently wait in worshiping and praying. There is, there is joy in, in obedience. There is blessings in obedience. There is contentment in obedience. When we obey, we go further than we would have gone with our pride and arrogance. And I want to speak especially to those of you who are now mature enough to know that even if your mom and dad have differences, Please don't enter into their differences to the extent that you cannot pursue your dream because you belong to the side of the dad or the side of the mom. Let them have the differences, but please obey all of them. If you can, separate three. But listen to what they tell you as long as it is not destructive. If they are not telling you, do this something wrong to your dad, do this something wrong to your mom. If they are telling you, my daughter, I already have enough problems with this marriage. Please don't do this. Don't do this. Please listen. Just listen. Dear good people, if there is a great lesson that ascension can teach us is to respect the process. There is a reason why the Bible tells us that creation took six days. And I have said this in the past. God being God could have created the world instantly. There is a reason why everything takes time. And dear good people, everything good takes time. And everything good is expensive. You are not just good. You are very good. From the Bible, you are very good. So you must be a gem. An expensive thing. Very expensive. Please respect that fact. Please do. Refuse to be swayed. Refuse to enter into groupings of destructive nature. Refuse to be shown with some hearts one day, pointing, look at him. He had passed very well. Now he is useless. And some people in the world will celebrate when you fall down. They will for sure. Some people will be so happy that you never made it. Some people will be so happy that you ended as a useless fellow. Following the process is painful. But I have always told you, whenever there is pain, there is a bright outcome. Even the best of the metals, for them to be what we know them today, they went through a lot of pain in terms of purification. Time purifies 
a human soul. Time purifies a human mind. It does. That is why some positions even of leadership politically and even in the civil world, you must be of a certain age having achieved a certain level because with time, something changes in your system. Dear good people, let us not rush that which was never supposed to be rushed. Specifically, our dear young men, there is nothing like instant riches. Please, our dear beautiful young girls, marriage is not an urgency. Please, wait until you have matured enough so that you can say, I make this decision in the Lord and in spirit, that the Lord may bless it. Having even had the blessings of your parents, having also achieved your goal, dear men, those of you who hurry our girls for marriage, please know that women are not interested with the money only. People think that women only need money. No. Some of our women want to achieve their goals. Please don't kill her goal. Please don't. Please don't. You may be having a lot of money, but that is your money. If a day comes, you are the one to decide how much you give to her, other times you can't give her, please allow her to go work, earn her own money. If in your family or in your clan, you don't marry women who work, go look for those who don't work. Don't look for one, kill her dream, kill her career, kill her hope, and then you keep there as a slave. You must be very unfair. So inhuman. Please don't. If you think women only need money, then you are mistaken. Our women need to achieve their goals. And our dear, gracious young girls, and I have said this maybe the fourth time, I'm saying it the fourth time, every time you are entering into a relationship, please engage your brain. Your heart may lie to you. Your brain will never lie to you. Listen to the voice of reason. Most of us will tell you what you don't want to hear. Please listen to us. Some of us have been there. Your mother was one day a beautiful young girl like you. She knows what she went through. There is something she is trying to tell you. Please listen to her. She may be stupid. Listen to her stupidity. With all that, she has taken you to school. With all her stupidity, Alikuza, she gave birth to you. If she was so stupid, she would have aborted you. She didn't. She carried you. Some of them carried you with a lot of tears. They raised you with a lot of tears and shame. She doesn't want you to go through the valley that she went through. Please listen. There is no hurry in this world. There is a process. Finish. Graduate. Get a job. Do something. Pay your own bills. Please do. Feel the pain of paying the bill. Feel the pain of doing some shopping for your food stuff. Feel that pain. Then you can make a decision. If it adds value into your life, please enter into marriage. Some of you are just are giving us negative publicity about marriage simply because you didn't do a good, good decision making. If we have to wait for tomorrow, let us enter into the wisdom of God. He is showing us how to go about it. We must mature into something. Beatific vision is not tomorrow because we need to mature. Job did not say, I know I am going to see the Lord. Job talks of a future that will come. I know I will see. Then, when I have matured enough, I will see the face of the Lord. Some of you are in three years program, others four years program, and others five years program. Please complete and finish. Please do. There is joy in waiting. But more importantly, there is blessing in obedience. Thank you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.